Bonjour, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. This club is exactly how it sounds. A bunch of amateurs talking about their favorite mysteries. So if you encounter a real mystery or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Do not come to us. We do not know what we are doing. But enjoy the program. Allons-y. Let us begin. I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to order. My name is Tristan Miller, the saucy sleuth. I'm Melissa Maley, the spy. Still don't have an audible link. Time's just gotta... I don't know. You, just read a book. <laughs> read a book. Just, you know, read a book. Tristan started recording and looked like uh, they forgot what we were doing. Yeah, I was like, what am I doing? I don't... Uh, you know, sometimes... <laughs> What is what is this even? Yeah. What are what are we what 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 what? Um. <laughs> again, we're gonna do this in the beginning, and I think this is a good format change. Go to Patreon.com/slash ADC Pod. Hey Brett, um, new member. Um, ah yes, hi Brett. There's a bunch of bonus content there, a huge backlog, and we'll eventually get to making make new stuff. And generally, really try to release the episodes early there, though we've been kind of behind lately, obviously. Um, also go to scavengenetwork.com where they were part of our podcast network. They have a bunch of great content there. And then also, Tyler's not here and he's on sabbatical. And if you're starting with these episodes, I can't wait for someone to go like, I want to know who this mysterious Tyler person is. <laughs> because I've refused to go back and listen to any other episodes. I only listen to the new ones. <laughs> if, you, if you are new to us within the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. But we also are on the social meds. Uh, we're at ADC Pod. <laughs> Yuck! I hate social meds. <laughs> oh, I didn't even make it up. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. At ADC Pod, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want all the like news, you know, little news that we have, Twitter and. Instagram or the best place because it's just like we I like the episode's gonna be late or something which it is it's just gonna be late we might just switch to doing Wednesdays I think that might just be the new schedule because like <laughs> it's really, happened it's become a pattern I'm really looking forward to um us pushing one day more continually until we end up back on Monday <laughs> yeah it's 100 percent or Tuesdays or whatever. We were Mondays for a while, we then were, Tuesdays. Yeah, and now we're Wednesdays, and eventually it'll be on. Th- I think we're still aiming for Tuesdays. We're aiming for Tuesdays, but if we miss, we're like, eh. <sighs> we were both busy. I was just in Baltimore doing my show. You were in a Pennsylvania for a couple of weeks. We got stuff going on. It's a lot. As it turns out, Pre-pandemic life was at a pace that was unsustainable for humans. We didn't know what we were doing. And now that we know what we're doing, it's it's very overwhelming. Also, we went through a collective trauma as a society. But you didn't come here for that. No. You came here to listen to us talk about apple picking. <laughs> In your childhood, Tristan? Yeah, yeah, almost every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, like, I had, like, five (laughs) jokes, and I'm like, none of those are appropriate, so (laughs) gonna just breathe in. (laughs) Okay. Um, But, yeah, I've gone apple picking a fair amount. Um, My my parents generally do it once a year with a family that I don't live in Minnesota, so I don't fly out just for apple picking day. But, um, yeah, we used to, a fair amount, we also go pumpkin picking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you just went apple picking then. I did on Sunday. Ooh. Yeah. Went out to uh, North Salem, New York on Metro North with my best friend Kristen and... Tight f- <laughs> rock. <laughs> Am I not your best friend? What the hell? <laughs> I have more than one. Oh, then it's not best, is it? Best means one. <laughs> best in sh- They don't hand out like seven best in shows at a dog show. Do you know what? I do. 
<laughs> and it's to all the dogs because That's you right. can't just pick one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think I like certain kinds of dogs better than other kinds of dogs. And I do, except when I meet a dog, they're automatically the best dog. Interesting. Other than my dog. Mm. My dog will always be the best dog. But yeah, we went apple picking and we've been going to the same place for many years at this point, except for last year. We didn't go last year. Understandably so. Mm -hmm. Um. And, uh, yeah, we got some apples. We wandered around in the pumpkins. We got some apple cider donuts. You ever kicked a pumpkin? Very satisfying. Gross, though. Very gross. I don't think so. Mm. I've lived for more than a short time. You are you're you are more than this many holds up four fingers. That's correct. So uh, I didn't it, hold up my four fingers, but it was fun <laughs> to say that. Uh, we could just say anything. Yeah, I'm now. Oh, if you can believe it, I'm getting the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in through the window. Oh, there a is. raven's delivered it. Oh my god. <laughs> So we've both had a tiring day, so we're a little slap. <laughs> oh yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's nice. Mm-hmm. There's lots of leaves. It feels like fall. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. It's autumnal, as we've discussed. Yeah. Um, do you uh, like apple cider? Yes. Okay. Do you? No, I hate it. Can't stand the stuff myself. Okay. Also, apple juice could never. I was a grape juice kid. Oh. Yeah. Which See. I think was like a foreshadowing of my alcohols. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have apple juice, mm. warm apple juice, every night before I went to bed. Oh, gross. For many years. Nasty. That's nasty, if you ask me. And when I was in the hospital and they were they were like do you want something to eat i was mm-hmm. like absolutely not after i had had you know a 5 hour surgery and was on tons of medication uh and they were like would you like some apple juice and i was like yes i would love some apple That's juice That's just went good. straight back <laughs> i i don't know um it's just too bitter for me i think it's i don't know it's just it's got a tang to it i like apples a lot but okay I'm also allergic to the food dye that they put in most apples, so I can only have organic. Okay. I'm still on you calling apple juice bitter because it's confusing to me because well, bitter t- is not the right word tangy, to me. Tart. T- okay. All tart right. mm. might be the best word for it. Because that's not it just, even it's how It's also I would... dry. It like makes my mouth dry. It like, oh. I don't know. It's a bad feeling I have when I drink an apple juice. Wow. This is fascinating. Well, I don't People know. should study you. <laughs> I've been saying that for years, as has my mother. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you figure out what's wrong? I can't have tried. <laughs> anyway, so we're watching episode three of Only Murders in the Building. So when I heard that title... Mm-hmm. I did not think of it the way the show presents it of like we're only covering murders in the building oh yeah I thought that the only thing that happened in this building was murders this building it's only murders yeah, oops all murders oops all murders <laughs> pretty much and I was like oh I assumed there was like a serial killer situation but that's not the case this episode is called how well do you know your neighbors so we see we open on Trees a flashback. Green. Red roses too. I see them blooming. We open. You. We open on a flashback to 2005. Right. And. <laughs> oh, the fact that that's a flashback. Has <laughs> I know. Been spiraling. Uh, yeah. We see Oliver presenting in a bad wig in a bad wig with a ponytail mm-hmm. his 
uh, his concept for Splash the Musical. Now, Splash is a film, right? Yes, correct. It's starring Tom Hanks, where he encounters a mermaid. Yes, and the mermaid lives in his bathtub for a period of time. And okay. they fall in love. Yeah. Would you fall in love with a mer person? A merson, if you will? <sighs> Merson. I mean, who wouldn't I fall in love with? That's fair. But who's hotter, Ariel or Ursula? Ariel. Okay, to each their own. Do you mean? Okay, what? the sweet sea witch. Yes, I understand who the sea Ur- witch Ursula is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but like, do you mean because she becomes Vanessa? So I'm not sure if you mean just Ursula. Or no, I mean Vanessa. Ursula. Both of them as they are underwater. Oh, sure. Ariel, yeah. Okay. To each their own. Okay. There you go. When <laughs> that was, I'm going to admit something very personal. Oh, boy. Uh, when she does do the body language thing, that was like uh-huh. the first way, like, real, like, if I have a memory of, like, oh, this is me going, oh, I think I understand what sexuality is. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Which might be why I'm into thick women almost exclusively. Okay. Anyway, so he <laughs> splashed the musical. Yes, and he's going to have a pool on stage. In stage, indented into the stage. Yeah, yeah. Bad idea. Yeah, and you can dive down and splash. Yeah. Okay. And he's pitching this to Nathan Lane, who is not playing Nathan Lane. He has a character name. Teddy Demas. Thank you. He's a big Broadway producer. Yes. And... Martin Short's character's name is Oliver Putnam. Oliver, thank you. Our Oliver Putnam, his wife is there as well. Yes, we finally see his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's great. Uh, and he says she's totally out of my league, and, and that's talks tr- about correct. Yes, it's correct. Um, he talks about when he met her and like how he just didn't give up, which is, you know. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I guess persistence pays off, but like only in a certain way, because at a certain point it becomes not good. It also is like clearly this, her his wife, whose name we do know, but I can't remember, yeah. um, clearly was like receptive to it at a certain point. Right, exactly. And it's one of those things of like, she was like, this this guy's weird, but he's fun to be around. Like, they clearly like, anyway. But he he, he persisted. Roberta. Her name's Roberta. Roberta. Yes. Her name is Roberta. I say this about Josephine, but imagine wanting your kid to be named Robert so much that you're like, we need to figure out a girl Robert name real quick. (laughs) Like, you were so determined. (laughs) Come on, just take the L. Call her Lucy. <laughs> um, so he finally convinces Teddy, played by Nathan Lane, uh, to invest to invest in in Splash the Musical. Very, very excited. Was... Everything's wonderful, and Everything we, that's the cold wonderful. open, and we get the credit sequence. Was Splash the Musical a real musical? Because I feel like it was, right? Or almost? I I can't quite remember. Like, there's something in my brain about it that could go either way. I'm going to Google quick. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Um, I, by the way, Nathan Lane's great. He is. He's really very excellent. He's very good in this role, too, specifically. Yes, he is. No, there is no Splash the Musical. Okay, that's... What I figured that they would do with, you know, because of it being a show where they have to make talk up about stuff. fictional things. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it wasn't. Because they it have is, to lie to us. Yeah, you know, where they have to lie to us. Um, I figured that it was maybe um, maybe fake, but it sounds like it could have been. Yeah. that The fact that we're questioning it at all is, means yeah. it was good writing. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> part of the way they talk about it reminds me of. The Spider-Man yeah, was turn off the say. dark. Mm-hmm. Clearly inspired by. I recently met someone who had actually seen that movie and was like, at the time, was very hype about it. I was like, no, this was really fun. <laughs> and then like saw Lion King. I was like, it's not as good as Spider-Man. <laughs> Which is so funny to me. That is funny. And actually both directed by Julie Taymor. Yes. Um, yeah. 
Uh, but I got to see Nathan Lane perform on stage uh, a few years ago in Angels in America. Mm. And he was extraordinary. Like He's a very good actor. Yeah, he's a really good actor. It's always fun to see him pop up. And When did he first arrive into your life? Oh, Nathan Lane has always been in my life. It feels like and in my heart. Yeah, it feels like I was born and knew about. He Nathan held Lane. you as a baby, if you can believe it. <laughs> One of my friends, Christina, she has a photo of her being held by Marlon Brando <laughs> because, like, I think it's Marlon Brando because, like, her father was like part of the actor studio or something. No, it's Pacino. I'm so sorry. Okay, same thing. Um. <laughs> Italian. They're all the same. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, um Nathan Lane Lion King, obviously. Yeah. And then immediately the birdcage. Yes. Which so good in that. And I saw both, but I definitely knew about Nathan Lane before that. Interesting. Even. Yeah. So we've made it to the credit sequence yeah. and we're twenty <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> sounds sounds about, about right. Yeah. Um, and we have, after the credits, we have Mabel. Uh, she's sketching on the wall. Yes. She's sketching the neighbors in the Harconia. Um, I was going to say, is Mabel a creep? She might be a creep. Yeah, she she might could be. be. She's uh, certainly weird. Yeah. Weird and hot. Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> That's the thing. You can be as weird as you want. If we've learned anything recently, you can be as strange as you want as long as you're hot. That is unfortunately a just true thing about humanity. Uh, you can get away with a lot. Yeah, I suppose. Like, I want Rihanna to be mean to me. Like, that's the <laughs> level of hot she is. It's like, even if she was like, fucking move out of the way, I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> when you said that the reason I, I i turned inward for a second is mm -hmm. like okay how, how much hot how much hotter do i have to be to be able to get away with as weird as i am uh, as weird as i want to be that's the thing, weird as you want to be i think you you've mastered the ratio right now oh good okay um no this is about where i am yeah. I don't think that I'm hiding anything from you about how weird I am. Uh, mm. I think I think I've always understood my ratio as well. Let's just say that. <laughs> Pretty freaking weird. I'm glad we're here. Um, <laughs> so we have. God. Yeah, we have to stop giggling so because I'm gonna cut it all out. We have big sleepover energy today, which I enjoy. Yes, we do. That's always what I'm trying to foster is that intimacy and silliness from a sleepover. Whenever I'm on stage doing stand up, I'm like, that's what I want. Huh. And that's why I shoot for this weird thing and everyone's like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have Oliver and Charles. What? It's just like every time I'm on stage, I want someone to go, are we going to kiss? What's going on? Are we going to have a pillow fight? She's, she's, right, full she's drawing on the wall, and then we go back Zachariah, to Zachariah. we go to Charles and Oliver recording the podcast. Oh right, and he's a Charles has a concertina. Yeah. Um, and so they end up talking about um, like they want to <laughs> they want to get in touch with Mabel, and <sighs> Charles can't decide whether he wants to call or text. Yeah, he's like, should it be a text? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a beat and and Oliver goes they don't like it when they call you call yeah <laughs> and I'm like that's very true we it's don't true. we don't we don't mm -mm. and it's weird to think that there's that there is that generational gap but it's a very se sweet sequence because he does text Mabel he says something very funny as Oliver's walking away because the doorbell rings and and Charles goes, which sounds more casual? Hello, dear Mabel or greetings, Mabel, <laughs> which is very funny. And he says it like a kid. Like, I don't know. There's something so charming about Steve Martin in this show. Yeah. He's very 
He's very funny in this episode specifically. Um, and it's yes. So uh, we get the the next gut milk shipment mm-hmm. from Ursula downstairs, mm-hmm. and she also delivers uh, some info about Tim Kono, and a very upsetting letter from Bunny saying that his utilities are gonna be turned off if he doesn't pay up in the next 24 hours yeah Mm. and then we go to selena gomez this character's name is mabel Mm -hmm. and she is in a cute little jumpsuit again but like a working class like blue collar like literally blue collar jumpsuit very fun yeah she's uh she's been painting but the thing is, and we've had conversations about this, she is wearing work clothes on her bed, and that is not okay. That's not of God. That is a sin, and she should go to confessional. Doesn't bother me. <sighs> <laughs> See, this is why you can't sleep over. <laughs> That's why. That's the reason. You can't. You cannot do that in my home. I will scream. I'm sitting, like, right next to your I bed I know. It right makes now. me nervous. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> So, <laughs> Mabel gets a text from Charles Old. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Saying, it, it says Charles Old, and she... she and said, it says, he says, Charles goes, I figured out the perfect one. And he says, aloha, Mabel. <laughs> we are headed to apartment to go over suspects in the death of Tim Kono. I hope you can join best Charles Hayden Savage. <laughs> and she's like... You don't have to sign your text. But also, when her little, like, iPhone thing appears, yeah. his contact is Charles parenthetical old. Yeah. Which I lost my <laughs> gourd when that happened. Because I didn't notice that the first time. <laughs> so funny. And, like, also absolutely something I would do. Yeah. I don't know if you... When, okay, when you put someone, a new person in your phone. First and last name. Also context of how you met them. No. <sighs> Ooh, okay. Um, uh, unless it's a person where I like, I don't know their last name or I forget their last name or um, like I met one of my, my running friends from Instagram mm. who does not have their last name on their Instagram. Mm. And I know her last name, but I couldn't think of it. So she's in there like with contacts, context. Okay. I will often put in like where it says, you know, first la- name, last name, and then company. Mm-hmm. I'll put it like a note of like, this is where you met this person. Because okay. people will text me and I'm like, I don't know who this is. Oh, okay. Well, I think that makes more sense for you. But also like I will <laughs> also have it. A lot of people in my phone have the last name Tinder. <laughs> Oh, yeah. See, I don't online date. Yeah, so there you go. And I'm also not a comedian. That's also true. So, yeah, these are very specific. Like, I need to know who this person is, what show I met them at. Rich doesn't put, like, anyone in his phone. So it's just numbers? Yeah. That's boss. I am in his phone as my name. Okay. Uh, Rich is also in my phone as Rich melissa's yeah uh, because i would be like who's rich <laughs> a lot of people's phones have him in that way as mm-hmm. well yeah Kristen has rich in her phone that way and i had yeah i had you in as melissa fools and kings when i first met you because right. i didn't know your last name sure for the first couple months because i couldn't be bothered okay also i was it comes out yeah it also like doesn't it comes out you you breaking news um i was gonna go for didn't bit, care bit, about bit. me for the first three months that we knew each other i so. also was like wh- I, when we met each other it was during a particularly chaotic production of uh what was it comedy, comedy Varys. Varys. and we didn't have any scenes to, we didn't have many scenes together no. so like i would like melissa is just a person that's around um but also producing the show but yes. yeah uh-huh yeah but also like I, I don't know like when am i ever gonna see this person again number one that that was the thing i was like <laughs> i don't know if i will and like <laughs> also like again context like i'm a little like i don't remember who this but i once knew someone who had only emojis like not their name spelled out as emojis but like I was like, that's messed up. I couldn't. Ooh, what? 
also i don't trust that like you clearly have a burner phone that's what that means <laughs> like you're in, in some illicit thing anyway <laughs> tyler we miss you we can't stay on track yeah no because i'm live <laughs> No, we truly can't because things are, uh, we're too interested in each other. We like each other too much. Whereas we need someone who's like, shut up. <laughs> we need someone who's staring at us annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, so Mabel goes up to the apartment. Yes. And we've got like a whole, a whole, uh, you know, bulletin board with pictures and diagrams <laughs> kind of. Mm-hmm. It's so Charles, Charles taking selfies <laughs> with all the people who are tenants in the building and Mabel's like why are they all s- selfies and he's like well I didn't want to draw suspicion and he's like that's not he's not wrong yeah <laughs> and do you love how more and more Charles is clearly like I can't see the forest for the trees yeah and Oliver is the opposite of like w- <laughs> just like he sees such a wide picture yeah that he is missing important details. It's such a good dynamic that they've made. Oh, um, it's, it's real good. So Charles suggests, much like um, sculpting an elephant, you chip away at everything that's not the element. The elephant. Yeah. When you're like working with marble. And so all we have to do is use inductive reasoning to get rid of everyone who isn't the murderer. And... <laughs> Oliver's like, no, that's crazy talk. You have to cast a lead. And there's this nice double entendre of a lead, like a lead as in like when you're, you have a lead in a case and also a lead in a musical. Right. So that's fun, I guess. <laughs> it is fun. It is. Uh- <laughs> but there's this great sequence where... <laughs> Oliver turns to the camera, essentially. He goes, I have it. And then a spotlight shows up. Yep. <laughs> and then the walls open up from behind Charles and Mabel. And they both <laughs> awkwardly step to the side as the camera pushes through. Yeah. And Steve Martin's face is so funny. He's really funny in this episode. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Steve Martin, pretty funny pretty man. Pretty funny guy. Yeah. Um, but he truly, I've always said this, he and Harrison Ford should play brothers Mm -hmm. in something where it's like he had, you know, the oddball brother and then someone, you know, the straight laced. Yeah. Because he sometimes will make a face. I'm like, you two look exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they have a similar look. It never occurred to me that Steve was handsome until someone pointed it out because he just like looks like a guy to me. Yeah, he's he's handsome. Yeah. Um, but so we're on a Broadway stage and it actually I'm pretty positive this is in a Broadway theater because it looks like the St. James. Oh, okay, maybe. Um I've just been there more than once, that's why. I've been to a lot of Broadway theaters more than once and I can't think okay. I can't tell you what they look like. I haven't, and that's why it matters. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. He has all the suspects lined up in like a casting line. It's it's a chorus line. Which it's, is, is that a thing? Is that a real thing? I've seen it only in film. It certainly, I mean, sometimes it is. Um, but this is very, very, like the way they're dressed is very the opening scene of a chorus line. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. not familiar at all with that. Um, it's property. It's a show about a show with that cinematic universe. <laughs> the the opening show uh, opening is uh, God. I hope I get it. Oh I yeah, hope I get yeah. it. How many boys? How many girls? How many people does he need? How many people? Mm-hmm. I really need this job. Please, God, I need this you job. You can't. You can't. We we'll oh, have to pay many, royalties. Too oh, too many. We'll okay. have to pay royalties. Anyway, so yeah, that's what they're doing. Oh, it's, okay. It's very funny. Because it also happens in a film that I saw recently called Showgirls, which is a wild movie. Um, And I was just like, is this a real thing? Because it seems rude. It is rude. It seems like unnecessarily rude. Yes. Yeah. And mean spirited. I, I haven't had uh I haven't been in too many of the like t- typing auditions oh, sure. where they're like yes, no, yes, no, yes, no cuz they'll 
but I've I've been in, in at least one, and it sucks. So many things in the entertainment business are archaic, and it's deeply frustrating. Yep. Whereas, like, I do, as much as I hate doing self-tapes, I love that I just send it away, and if I don't hear back, I don't hear back. Yeah. Done and dusted. Yeah. So he's he's very interested in Howard, who is uh, Evelyn's cat daddy. Which... He says, and I lost my gourd last time when you said that, because I thought you had made it up, and it turns out, no, you were just paying attention to the show, and I felt betrayed. Yeah, that is exactly what I was doing, and I definitely remember that that happened, (laughs) and I wouldn't have said it anyway. Hey, cat daddy. (laughs) Uh, So they're very interested in the fact that Evelyn died on the same night. The cat. Evelyn the cat died on the uh, the same night as Tim Kono, and the human. Yes. So we. The fun never ends. <laughs> Adventure time. <laughs> right. So basically, we we get to the fact that Howard didn't like Tim because Tim didn't like Evelyn, and yes. thinks that he killed Ev- Tim killed Evelyn. So then. Howard killed Tim or whatever. Revenge. Yeah. So uh, because there's a lot of complaints against Tim in the file um, from the man's name you just said. Howard. From Cat G- Daddy. <laughs> uh, Cat Daddy done like Tim, and there's a lot of complaints in the file that he, uh, Oliver was handed. Yeah. So Oliver is like, we have to follow this lead, and then they're like, okay, that actually makes sense. Yeah, um, sure. Why not? And so he goes, okay, so what you got to go do is interview Howard yeah. and he, and make him upset and see what happens. <laughs> Which Charles is like, excuse me, a potential murderer you want us to go upset a murderer? Yes, that's exactly. And then Oliver's like, I got to go. And they're like, why? And there's this whole thing throughout the episode where um, – Oliver makes a fuss that he spent all this equipment on podcasting equipment and they should pay him back. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, as someone who's bought podcasting equipment, he's lying about how much that stuff costs. Oh, which 100%. is obvious. Because I'm like, I was like, you have like three condenser mics and an interface. Like, that's maybe a thousand dollars. Yeah. Unless you're getting stupidly high on mics. I guess maybe. I don't know. But. Sure, but yeah, at the same time, it seems like he's trying to just, you know, make up what he needs to pay his bills. Yes. <sighs> so then Oliver goes, we follow him, or do we follow Mabel and... We follow an ad. Because <laughs> it's either Oliver going to Teddy, or it's them going to... So Oliver goes to Teddy's apartment... And Teddy opens the door and goes, ah, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> because he immediately goes, you look so good. You haven't fa- aged. I need the number of your witch. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, ah, oh, God, Oliver, what do you want? Yeah. And he pushes past him and makes some other joke. And the captions do say laughs maniacally <laughs> or yeah. manically, rather. Same thing. Same. Sure. But it's very accurate and then we also we cut back and forth between um then we have charles and mabel on the elevator oh and going to go visit visit howard and we get introduced to a new character yes so in the elevator walks um a woman carrying a an instrument case a musical Uh, instrument case not just like a bunch of girders or whatever girders aren't anyway so uh, so she, Charles starts making conversation with her. She says that it's a bassoon. Um, and he's like, oh, I've heard you play. And she apologizes. Oh, I should really close my window. And he says, no, no, I think it's lovely. It's this, I think of it as the sound of the building. Mm-hmm. And so they're very clearly having a nice little moment. There's a really fun moment because she goes, I'm first chair mm-hmm. in... The City Symphony? Something like that. And 
Charles goes, oh, Mabel, you hear that? She's first chair. And she goes, that's great. I do not know what that means. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there are people who don't know what that means. <laughs> like, yeah, it's I never know. occurred. I'm like, oh. Me either. Huh. Um, and then later on, she, um, what is the new character's name? J- that's jo- Jan. Hmm? Jean? Jan? Joy? I thought it was Jan. Jan. It's Jan. Jan. Sure. Jan. Um, but she says, I play my bassoon with the window open so I can hear the echo and adjust my umbrasure. Yeah. And Charles turns to Mabel and he goes, well, the umbrasure is a mouth position. (laughs) (laughs) It is a very nice little innuendo. And, but the whole time Mabel is like, it's very clear that Mabel does really like Charles. Yeah. this entire time and she like likes that he's getting along with this other woman because she really is rooting for charles in a way that is like she, she's not rooting for oliver at all so mm. far which is interesting yeah despite charles having like done like essentially kind of lied in that first episode right i don't know it's interesting yeah i mean she's lying too so that is true yeah um uh, but oliver Gosh, I don't know. There's something about them. Charles really, he just seems so lonely and sad. He has a a lot of pathos, and Oliver's a nut. Yeah. (laughs) And he's loud. And he's also, Oliver is also mean, is the thing. He has, he's very, he'll undermine you with a quick jab for no reason. Yeah. (laughs) Other than insecurity. Yeah. Anyway, so that interaction goes well. And Mabel's like, all right. <laughs> she says, get, get some, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Or whatever his last name is. And he goes, I will not. And she goes, not with that attitude. And he goes, is my <laughs> nose bleeding? And she says, what? And she, he goes, sometimes when I get stressed, my nose bleeds. Yeah. And she's like, no, you're fine. And then another point that they need to, that needs to be made is Oliver has asked them to make sure that Howard knows that he's being recorded, that, that you say you're being recorded. Yeah. Because otherwise legal issues, which is knowing what I know in New York, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's fine. Um, it's a fun bit, but at one point as they're walking towards Howard's apartment, <laughs> Mabel reminds Charles of this and he goes, yeah. And then he goes down to his lapel and goes testing. Testing, and you can kind of tell there's just like such a <laughs> crazed because Charles is also a nut, <laughs> but in a completely divergent way, where he's just so weird. <laughs> yeah, he's so weird, and I think it's a weird in a way where I get the feeling that Steve is also weird like that. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, it seems a little too honest. <laughs> I keep thinking about. <laughs> Having seen him on the dating game. Oh, sure, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, he having is. read a couple of his books, he seems like this is, he's just kind of playing himself. Yeah. Which makes sense because he came up with the idea and is an executive producer and is a writer on the show. Yeah. So uh, we cut back to Oliver and uh, Teddy, and Teddy has a quick conversation with his son, Theo, who we find out is deaf. Yes. Uh. And he says, hide the hummus. He has a problem yes. in sign language, which is very funny. <laughs> uh, so Oliver reveals to Teddy what he's doing, that he's, you know, making a podcast about a murder that happened in the building and, you know, sell, tries to sell him on it. And asks for advertising space for 35 thousand doll hairs yeah anchor if you're listening <laughs> this is my new demand <laughs> just give us thirty five thousand dollars uh <laughs> that used to be what i made in a year for a while mm-hmm. just realizing now so far below the poverty line <laughs> ah, ah, it's new york what are you gonna do um <laughs> So uh, Teddy's like, all right, come on. No, absolutely not. Go away. <laughs> and he says, there's a really fun exchange. Oliver's like, well, think about how much fun we had making the shows. He goes, I love our shows. It's 
burning money that I'd mined, yeah. which is very good. And he yeah. goes, come back, we'll have a drink. And he goes, well, when would that be good? When it doesn't fi- cost me 35K yeah. <laughs> is when we can have a drink. Right. No, exactly. Uh, so then we're back in, we're in Howard's apartment now. Yeah. And he has a portrait of a cat on and the he, wall. He has not moved anything since Evelyn. Yeah. Her death. Right. Because he's like, it's like she's still here if I can. like. So her food bowl's still full. He hasn't like washed his clothes. And he's clearly in a state. Yeah. And. Now, there's like a an amount of cat hair that is. Uh, more than one would think. <laughs> Don't get me started <laughs> about dander. Mm. 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 <laughs> Someone who's allergic to most animals. Mm-mm. Um. So over the course of the conversation, Mabel says, it, lo- it feels like everyone loved Evelyn, unlike Tim Kono. Right. And he goes, well, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of the dead. And she goes, he was a prick. And yeah. he goes, he was. Like, which is such a human thing. Yeah. And I, it was so funny. Because I'm like, yeah, people wait until someone else grants them com- permission to yeah. kvetch about exactly. someone. And so Howard thinks that Tim poisoned Evelyn because he hated Evelyn, because he would oh he would leave his window open and Evelyn would get into his house. Um, and so Howard thinks that Tim poisoned Evelyn and then killed himself over the guilt, which is an interesting theory. He also reveals that Tim had recently been fired from his investment firm for losing a client a lot of money. Yes. And, and Charles at some point gets up and points... <laughs> To the portrait of a cat. And mm-hmm. he goes, what a lovely portrait of Evelyn. It's a, his first cat. It's Howard's first cat. It's a different cat. And Howard yeah. just goes, and she was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very funny. <laughs> and he goes, oh, well, it's still nice that you have her memory. It's almost like you're being recorded. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> bad. Yeah. And like, Mabel's face when he says that, it's just like, she's like... <laughs> I just cannot believe that that's the rowdy thing. It's so yeah. good. A lot of fun faces in this one. <laughs> and so good. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, Charles accidentally trips over Evelyn's full bowl, which is full like bowl. in the middle of the living room. Yeah, that's a weird place to put a... It's a weird place to put a, a, a food dish. Um, and then... Um, Charles's nose starts bleeding and Howard passes out. Charles goes to get ice from the fridge and sees Evelyn in the uh, in the freezer. And I couldn't help be reminded because Mabel is shouting, get ice, get ice. And he's like, he can't say anything because he's so shocked. And Steve, I want a side by side of Steve pointing at the freezer and... <laughs> Steve from the jerk going, he hates these cans because I was just like, oh, his body language is exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, so so yes. he's in the freezer. He sees that Evelyn is in there. And there's a frozen dead cat in the freezer. And listen, I am not generally super OK with dead animals. The way they do this is very funny. It is. Um, it, it's so gross, too. It's, it's gross. Uh <laughs> The cat falls out. The cat falls out of the freezer. And when, when, when Charles tries to put her back in, she, he finds out that in the fall, her arm, her little leg fell off. Yeah. And he puts it in his pocket. Out of panic. <laughs> Which is so funny. <laughs> and then he runs over with the ice and Howard wakes up. Yeah. And he goes, sorry, I faint at the sight of blood. Mm-hmm. And Mabel's like, oh, well, that must make it difficult for you to do things like be witness to bloody murders. Yeah. Just in case the audience didn't put it together. Yeah. <laughs> or Charles. Yeah. Uh, and he says, there's a cat in your freezer. He says, yes, I know that. And he goes, it's touching your food. 
<laughs> and I am with Charles 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I I am too ah. in this case. Um, do you know some serial killers uh, put their victims in the freezer? Yeah. yeah. Dahmer did, right? Well, yeah. I mean, Famously so. Yeah. Also, we've seen in the pilot that Charles puts his food in his fridge in a particular way. Yeah. So one must assume that this, this that really upset him. Yeah, so much. Uh, but yes, we cut back to Oliver in his apartment now, drink, playing the piano and drinking gut milk. Yeah, that's that's a mood. Oof. It was also interesting. Again, I keep learning things about Martin Short that I didn't know. Apparently, he can play the piano a little bit. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. I believe he's also, is he playing the theme from the show? Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, he's either doing that or I feel like he's playing something from Splash the Musical that they've already established. Yeah. One of the two. Anyway, it's a nice callback regardless. So he turns around and sees the poster for yes. Splash the Musical framed on his wall. Um, famous flop. Horrible flop. Uh, so. And as we all know. You can make more money with a flop than, than with, with a hit. hit. <laughs> uh, so we have, uh, we cut back to Charles and Mabel coming out of Howard's apartment. And he's like, I can't do anything. I can't go on dates. I can't solve murders. And blah, blah, blah. I can't do anything. I'm offer only. I don't go on auditions. And Mabel's like, whatever, go away. Yeah, because, well, he's going... I can't believe we're doing this. This is such a stupid idea. I can't believe Oliver talked me into this. My agent always says, don't talk to him. He's not worth it. He's unpredictable. Because yeah. where is Oliver even? He's unpredictable. And he's, he says, <laughs> which is so funny, because he goes, my, to my agent told me to never audition for him. Not that it matters because I'm offer only. Right. And she goes, bye. <laughs> and it's very good. Yeah. Again, both, <laughs> both Oliver and charles want people to respect them so badly and they don't get no respect i tell you what yeah <laughs> and it's very funny because it's also like arrogant again like i mentioned that previously it's very funny yes so charles gets in the other elevator that's opening up that has uh, which is currently containing oliver mm -hmm. behind charles his his giant poster mm -hmm. which he's decided that he's going to sell Yes. It's a very big poster. It is bigger. It is taller than him. Martin is famously short. Yeah. yeah. I want to know. I want to. I'm going to put Martin short height. Okay. Into the Google machine. Because I feel like he's like 5'7". Maybe 5'6". Okay. Uh, but he explains to Charles back in his apartment. 5'7", baby. There you go. He explains to Charles back in his apartment, uh, Oliver's, that original posters can go for thousands of dollars. And they're like, oh, is it, uh, Charles says, oh, is this your biggest hit? And he's like, no, it was my biggest flop. Yeah. I, <laughs> and then Oliver delivers this monologue. Yeah. Where he says the f opening night. He goes, number one, reviews were bad before we even started. Yeah. But then on opening night, the mechanism that opened to the pool wouldn't open. And there's a big number where all the chorus boys jump into the pool. And it was slow to open. And I said, just go for it anyway. And then they all, one by one jump yeah and thwomp 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 hit the ground and yeah charles goes all of them and he goes course boys tend to stick together <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things of like i watched this first on i have a projector and the sound isn't great mm -hmm. and so when i watched it the second time I, I watched it on my computer and they put like some music from the musical and screaming underneath the dialogue, which I did not. And it makes it so much funnier, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 
And and Jarl goes, well, we all make mistakes. Well, nobody died. No. Okay. Well, we all make mistakes, which is very solid. Yeah. A yeah. plus. Uh, he lost his son's college fund oh, and right. his wife Skidoo. left him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, Charles tries to tries to relate to him. You know, I know you can lose a lot from one big mistake. Um, and yeah, it, he says some really nice things to him. Like you push people out of their comfort zone. <laughs> I just knocked a frozen cat out of a freezer and I still have its leg. Yeah. And oh he goes, he pulls it out and he goes, it's still in my pocket. <laughs> and, and this smell is new. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's warm. And this smell is new. It's yeah. just so gross. It's but so it's gross. so off very f- because it's so muted and measured a response. It's understatement and it's yeah. very good. Yeah. Um so he asks for money. Oliver asks for money for the podcasting equipment again. And he goes, fine. But yeah. then Oliver runs out of Oliver's apartment, leaving Charles there to kind of go, okay. Yeah. And he's like, What are you gonna do? And he's like, I don't take no for an answer. Right. Which is consistent and then he shows up at teddy's place yeah and convinces him to essentially well he gives this monologue about like hey <laughs> i'm so sorry he goes to teddy's place teddy opens the door is like oh god and he goes listen when i sold you on splash the musical i was so nervous and then by the time I pitched it to you, saw a young, confident man. You were nearly 58. <laughs> but you saw a confident person, and that's what I want to give you, you know, and that's who I am, and I'm trying to find myself again. He goes, and, you know, it was, he goes, well, it was, the, it was still a terrible, terrible <laughs> flop it yeah. was the arrogance of youth again you were nearly 60 <laughs> well i'm not that old now and he basically goes give me another shot he's like okay how much you want he goes it was what 3500 he goes 35,000 he goes no it's 37 now always ask for more right and then it cuts back to mabel and charles try looking at the board trying to figure out who done it mm-hmm. and they are just like, where is Oliver? <laughs> and Oliver bursts in. And he goes, the first episode is up. Google it under, what is it? Euro, some sort of like chicken wrap. Someone's chicken wraps presents only yeah. murders in the building because I got a big sponsor. And he's like, well, how many listens? Four. Okay. And then... Charles gets annoyed at Oliver because he's like, you rushed it. Basically, we don't have a lead. We don't have any idea what's going on. We did miss an important thing. Before he goes to Teddy's apartment, Oliver takes an elevator ride with Sir Sting. Is is Sting a knight? I I don't know. He, he, He might be a knight. Is is Sting? <laughs> well, you okay? Is Sting married? Is Sting in only murders in the building? Is Sting still alive? Is Sting a vegetarian? Is Sting still wrestling? What the hell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Was Sting knighted by the king queen? Another thing. Okay, go for it. In France. Oh, interesting. So Sirsting, Sirsting is a terrible word. Sirsting. Sirsting, it just sounds like all one word. Oh, yeah, and also the queen, so. Yeah, Sir Sting. Sirsting. Uh, is in the elevator with uh, Oliver and Oliver's dog, Winnie, the beautiful bulldog. And Winnie wants to be friends with Sting. Sting doesn't want to be friends. Sting is in a bad mood. Sting doesn't like dogs. And he says that several times. Yeah. There are plenty of reasons to not like dogs. 
that are legitimate and fair. If you're ever attacked by a dog, you don't ever need to like a dog ever again. That's my opinion. People, people are allowed to be horrible people who don't like dogs. It is not a crime for some reason. And um, I'm more of a toad person myself. Mm, you you ever, would be. <laughs> you ever look at a toad? I, I have. I've looked at a toad before. Cute little guys. Mm, not as cute as dogs. So Sting <laughs> is grumpy about Winnie trying to be friends. And he kicks her a little. He pushes her with his foot. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, it's a gentle nudge, I would say. It's still not something you want to do to your neighbor's dog. It's not a good look. But but yeah, he he's really really quite unfriendly. Yes. Uh so and also Oliver all this while is trying to make conversation with him. Right. And Sir Sting <laughs> <laughs> Does not enjoy that one no. bit. Um, another thing that has happened is Mabel takes a moment by herself before she joins up with um, the old guys. <laughs> the old farts. And she goes to the super's door. Right. And she says, hey, um, is Oscar back? I hear he's getting out. And it's Oscar's dad, the super, basically says, hey, leave Oscar alone. We don't, please don't. Yeah, he needs a fresh start. Yeah, don't don't come around asking for him. Uh, so Mabel starts, uh, goes back to her place and starts looking at all the jewels that Tim Kono had and trying to make sense of all of, all of the stuff that he's had hidden in these Hardy Boy books. And, um, you know, after learning that he has lost his job, uh, he also she sees a little note for a date, uh, one thirty one, mm. GM four p.m. four thirty p.m. Shore Road, and today is January twenty fourth. I didn't realize this took place in January. It seems like all their coats are a little light for January. At any rate, um, so she realizes that she has information that Tim was supposed to meet someone on January 31st. So she has a little bit of time. Yeah, which is coming up. Yeah. Um, so. And then they go all meet up and the scene I described happens. Yes. Because I jumped the gun, as they say. Because we're scrubbing through the episode as we're reviewing it, and it was a commercial. That was the only thing I could remember. <laughs> this is not... I, I can't scrub through the commercials. Hulu won't let me. Um, Those bastards. I know. I could pay more money and not get ads, but... We're, you're already paying money for a service that has commercials in it. It's messed up. I mean, it's actually not that messed up because of the fact that like that's what cable was, I guess. I guess, yeah, that's true. But... Again, my ex used to make a huge fuss about, like, Hulu's so stupid that way. I'm like, eh, you know, people got to make a buck. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So we go back to the theater with uh, the casting call as mm-hmm. as Oliver is in the elevator where, where, <laughs> where, this, where this show takes place, living in this elevator. Yeah. Um. So she she tries, she, he tries to, he starts to rule people out. Get off my stage, leave. You're not you're not a good suspect. You're not a good suspect. And then This whole court is not a good suspect. Yeah. Um, so he goes back to his apartment door and he has a note that says End the podcast or I end you. Bum bum bum. Very threatening. He walks in and he finds that the dog, Winnie, has been poisoned. Yes. And she is groaning, but she is very sick. Mm -hmm. Then it cuts. It goes, like, pushes in on Oliver's face, and he realizes who his lead is. And then it cuts to the theater, and we see Sir Sting holding a... A bass guitar 
sitting on a on a stool singing don't stand don't stand don't stand so close to me yep which is very funny yes given the circumstances vis-a-vis the dog yes uh and <laughs> i was saying to tristan earlier off uh off pod that <laughs> That it's wild that like there are extremely famous people in this show who are playing other characters, and then we just have Sting being Sting. Yeah, <laughs> it's Despite... very, very funny to me. Yeah, and Sting's not bad at the acting. I was saying as well, yeah. it's pretty good. He's also in David Lynch's Dune, which is okay. So he's done it before, but it's very strange. But it is very weird to like just have, as you say, like diegetically. No, Sting's a real person. Yeah, but Steve Martin isn't. Right. Or maybe Steve Martin is a real person and Charles Hayden Savage says I get mistaken for Steve Martin all the time. Right, right, right. Because that would be funny. That would be very funny. Um, yeah. Because there are people like that that look almost exactly the same as other famous people. Yes. So I am going to, for people who are like me, give a brief spoiler for the beginning of the next episode. So if you don't want to listen to it, Fast forward 10 seconds. The dog is fine. Okay, we're back. (laughs) The dog is fine. Okay, now we're really back. The dog is fine. End spoiler. Okay. Uh, Okay, so where are we? What did we think? (laughs) Yeah, we generally say what we thought of the episode. Yeah, where are are we with the episode? How do we feel about it? Well, the episode is over. That was the end of the episode. Yeah, I know. But how, where are we with our feelings about the episode? Third base. So. Um, I would say rewatching it, I laughed a lot more than the first time because I think mm-hmm. even though it is a very Oliver heavy episode, Steve really stood out in this episode to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say... I get 3.5 out of 5, maybe a 4. Like a very good episode. Again, this is hard because the mystery, we don't know how good the mystery is yet. Or at least I don't because Melissa's ahead. Yeah. Um, we are As we were recording this, the final uh, episode of the season has come out today. Um, I have not watched it yet, but I am caught up bef- uh, until there. I have not. I'm probably going to just so I don't walk into something i shouldn't on the internet on the internet yeah yeah. and also in life yeah sure uh yeah no it's it is it's difficult to rate at the moment because i feel like we're gonna get a better chance to rate it at the very end to be like this season is a you know yeah and i would also say this like what's kind of tricky for me about is like since it is for me a comedy first and a mystery second Mm -hmm. like if the comedy was successful and there was nothing egregious then it's a good episode you know i was entertained yeah so and it's also there's enough twists and turns like would have never seen sting coming how yeah didn't know i mean the notes on the note on the door is very threatening uh they're being very good about moving things along by the way i agree with you on rating it's like okay. three and a half four um again grading this on a curve now for me because uh comparing it to like other episodes of the same show because in comparison to other shows like this is an excellent show mm-hmm. so yeah hi marks but uh but yeah like we got some new character development for everybody um mostly for for Oliver but we still got uh especially some Charles in there and um yeah interesting fun scenes with Howard and then with Sting and um it's always nice to see Nathan Lane your Nathan childhood Lane, friend my childhood friend uh yeah and we'll get That's we'll get more of true. him, which is fun. That's true for someone that Nathan Lane was their childhood friend. Can you imagine? Yeah. That's so strange to think about. But the the show's really good. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. Big fan. Gavel sound. Are we still doing that? Yes. Uh calling the meeting to uh, call this meeting of the amateur detective club to a close. It's weird with just the two of us. Yeah. Gavel sound. Gavel sound. Because is it a club? 
<laughs> it is a club. Is it a club or is it a hangout? How many <laughs> members tell a club? <laughs> On that existential note, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>